I just was lucky. It was almost like you're playing against God, but we all know that can't happen. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird were prominent figures that brought the NBA to a new height of popularity, and many NBA fans alive during that time will call it the golden age of basketball. All three of these legends elevated the game to levels people didn't think possible, and their unique personalities reeled people in. They destroyed players in different ways that made fans and even players in awe of them. So I gathered some of the legends and players' stories about how amazing MJ, Magic, and Bird were and put them into one video. Comment below your favorite moment or story from these three legends if you have one. So enjoy the video, man. This one I knew Michael Jordan was crazy. Michael's the most competitive person I've ever been around in my life. So. Me, him, Chuck Daly, and David Robinson go play golf one morning. We're playing Puerto Rico that afternoon. And so Chuck says, hey, guys, we played 18. Let's go. Michael said, I'm going to play another 18. Chuck said, we got a game tonight. He says, I'll be good. So we get to the, <laughs> we get to the game. This is how crazy Michael is. We get to the game, and we get. And he's like, hey, uh, David, you got this guy. Charles, you got this guy. Scotty, you got this guy. Michael, you got got this guy. Michael said, "No, I got the I got the point guard." He says, "What?" He says, "I got the point guard." He says, "You don't want to guard the two guard." Michael's kind of leaning down. Michael looks like, "I said I got the point guard." He says some shit about me in the newspaper, and I'm gonna get him. <laughs> and we're looking around like, "Uh oh, this little kid in trouble." Yeah, but. It's just amazing how he played 36 holes of golf. And he's guarding this dude like it's game seven. And he's talking, don't you ever say my damn name again. I never want you to. I mean, and he's playing like, it's like, yo, man, we're looking like, I'm looking at Carmelo and I'm like, yo, man, there's something wrong with this dude. Like, that's how competitive he was. He played 36 holes of golf. And this kid from Puerto Rico. Chuck Bigley. Him, this is a Jordan rule. Every time you go to the fucking basket, put him on the ground. When he comes to the basket, he ain't gonna dunk. We're gonna hit you and you're gonna be on the ground. Jordan is still there. We tried to physically hurt Michael. Jordan had no place to go. Robert. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to be injured to score a basket? And the Pistons want to make Jordan pay whenever he gets in the paint. And then the referees back then didn't look to see if Michael was hurt or not. It wasn't. Make sure that the savior is okay. It wasn't, that wasn't the way it is. It's going to nobody because for him to survive that and still maintain that greatness, it's, it's very unparalleled. I will never forget this. I never had a player to do this. So I remember going, us going to Chicago. Now we're in the suit and tie. We're sitting in the locker room. We just walked in the locker room. Now remember, Michael Jordan walks into our locker room suit and tie. I'm like, what the hell is he doing in our locker room? Is he coming to, you know, to the training room, well, what's going on? So he walks by me, he walks by Kevin, we get to Randy with me, he said, lace him up, it's gonna be a long night. I'm like, did he just come in our locker room? <laughs> I didn't know what to say, I was shocked. He had 60 that night. The true story is he did uh, walk in our locker room after the game to alert, to just to alert us that, good luck tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. He didn't say what he was gonna do. He just walked in and said, hey guys, I want you all to know, good luck tomorrow. Uh, I can't wait to see you. It was a message. <laughs> 85 and 86, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, at that time when, when we overlapped. And it was funny because I, I I remember he came down and he dunked on like a whole team. <laughs> and then I went down and dunked on his team. <laughs> and whatever, I was looking at him, he was looking at me. And, and he was like, I could do it again, you know. <laughs> I said, well, all right, well, I only get one shot at it. Uh, you know, I made it. So, <laughs> right. but, but but it was fun. And, and you know, we, those years when we overlapped, we kind of, I caught him before he really hit his stride. Yeah. In those first three years, you know, he was trying to find, he was scoring a lot of points. Yeah. But he was trying to find himself, find the right uh, mix of teammates. So Michael walking back. I don't usually talk trash, but I had to that time. <laughs> so I said, Michael, if you don't turn into Air Jordan, we're going to blow y'all out. <laughs> Man, he started turned sweating. It was that tongue went long. <laughs> <laughs> you know when that tongue comes out. It's over. It's a problem. 
He about to, he about to do something. <laughs> Boy, that dude came out that timeout. He scored about four straight threes. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And I went, oh, man. Then he came down. I got to show you this one. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. So, I won't hurt myself. Okay. <laughs> so he stole the basketball. He coming down the right side. He takes off. David Robinson coming this way. So Mike just cuffed him. Mm -hmm. And he just looked at In him. In the air. And he kept looking. He kept looking. He kept looking. <laughs> he went all the way down, Jack. He did a 360. Ooh. Ooh. Bam! And ducked. I said, that's it. It's that's the, it. It's that, over that's now. That's him. It's over now. That's him. So, so he just looked at me, too, to let me know. Yeah. I'm coming. It's your <laughs> fault. <father. laughs> I'm here, yeah. And uh, Larry Bird and I sitting down. So he come in with his cigar. Whew, got his drink. <laughs> so how old is he right now? He's 26, 27? Yeah, yeah, young, you Young know. boy, yeah. yeah. So whew, I just want y'all to know. <laughs> There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> yeah. He says it's my league now. Yeah. yeah. He said, MJ, you had your turn. Larry Bird, you uh, had your uh, turn. Uh, uh. Now it's my league. Uh, I, I love it. And we all bow down. Yeah. You right. Yeah. 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 I, love it. I know he started counting backwards. You know, he said something like 38, and I didn't get it, Reggie. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he started saying 36. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he going backwards. And now, if he get to zero, he got 40. But it was me and Michael had some, <laughs> a lot of talks. So it was fun. Finished with like 48, 49, somewhere in there, 26, something like that. But Michael <laughs> fucking had like 55. Ooh. That motherfucker would not let me win that game. And I remember. 20, though. Yeah. I remember going home. When I got home, my daughter was upset. And I said, I told her, I had told her before, I said, ain't nobody in the world better at basketball than your dad, and we're going to win this fucking series. When I got home, she was crying, and I was like, she's dead. I thought you told me y'all were going to win. I said, I said, Christiana, I ain't never said this before. I think there's somebody better at basketball than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because, you know, it's, it's, it's Michael and... Larry and Magic, I says, I love that. Those guys are all great, but I says, they're great because he has Kareem, he has James Worthy, mm -hmm. Michael got Horace and Scotty and Bird got Mikhail and Paris. I says, I know I'm just as good as those motherfuckers, uh, but uh, they just had more help. Yeah. But I said, but going back to the 40 20 game, 24 game, I was like, I can will my team to win. But Michael, when I, that night when I, I was like, this motherfucker ain't gonna let me win this thing. Like I said, like I, said, I had my 40 something and he had fucking had 55. What was going through your head when you saw MJ coming oh, up shit. on the schedule? Oh my goodness, man. You look at that shit when they bring out the schedule in the summertime when they put them goddamn schedules out, you look and you put that damn mark on Chicago. <laughs> and you just. The night before, you ask me shit, man. It's sleepless nights, man. That shit be rough. I mean, I, man, thinking about this shit, what you got to do tomorrow, and you don't want to get embarrassed, and, mm -hmm. and you know this motherfucker don't know how to stop coming at you. He gonna, just like you, you just <laughs> keep coming and coming. And <laughs> keep that damn foot on your throat, man, and he just keep coming, and man, you just, I mean, you just have to do some shit that to him, try to do some shit to him that nobody else ever did to try mm -hmm. to get him off his square. But shit, you know, you can't, you can't touch him. You can't do nothing to him, man. So, and man, I just tried to do a shit that nobody else would do to him. And, but Mike is Mike, man. The best player ever, man, I ever played because I never, I never thought I'd see nothing like that, man. I used to see the bottom of that motherfucking tennis shoes, man. <laughs> when that Take off, spin on me so quick, man. I should be standing. I'd be like, oh shit, where is he at? That motherfucker be like, boom. I'd be like, oh lord. I should try to run back my head there. Cause everybody like, oh shit, and he come up behind you. You know, Michael, he's some like, funny style shit. He gonna run up behind you, hit you on your ass like that. Man, don't put your motherfucking hands on me. You on a different jersey, man. You don't touch a different jersey. Man, that's what he do to you, man. I, but Mike, man, is the best man. 
y'all two was a lot of people's favorite players. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, especially in that time period when y'all yeah. going at each other in the dunk contest, yeah. running up, Jordan, back and forth. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, Jordan was a giant back then. And even bigger now, you know. <laughs> he was a giant, man, but he was he was fun to play against. And we had friendly rivalries, but we were trying to go at each other's throat, you know. And um, it, with Mike, if you lost a game against him, it, you could still hold your head up high knowing you gave everything because they had a great team. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he was the, the engine that made them run. But he was – You'll never see another guy like it. I think the closest thing to him was Kobe. It was ugly. It was ugly. He took over practice. It was him, Ronnie Cycli, and some other guys. You know, Ronnie was on our team, but he played with our guys. You could tell he was still the best in the world. Never been dunked on in 19 years. I could probably say I've probably only been dunked on like three or four times. But his arrogance, Michael Jordan, came baseline one time and tried to dunk on me. And it hurt my heart. But I had to flagrant foul him and lay him out. And when I went to shake his hand and pick him up, he said, don't ever help nobody up. And he bounced right back up. And I knew then why he was the best player in the game. It resonated with me later because Pat Roddy once told me, you show other players respect by showing them none. So Michael Drew was like, hey, we're on different teams. Yes, we're friends, we're fraternity brothers, we're on different teams, but when we're on this court, I don't know you, Shaq. Larry Bird talked a lot of shit. Bird used to tell me, look here, Mike. I'm gonna go shoot this motherfucking jumper in your face right there in that corner. And it's gonna be your Christmas present. I'm gonna wrap it up and bust your head open. All that shit. He was the coldest dude I ever seen with that shit, man. Everybody be talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. Yeah. The shit, man. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was cold. Get it right here, Ed. And I'm gonna shoot it in your face. He hit it, he looked at me, and he was like, damn, I didn't mean to leave nothing on the clock. We had a lot of athletes, man. Can you tell us about the uh, the playoff series y'all had against Boston? Where uh, Tell us about the whole series, but tell us about the series all the way leading up to that game seven where you and Bird was back-to-back buckets. At you know what? We, we, we won game five uh, in Boston. We was not supposed to win that game, you know, the critics say. So we knew going to game six, I said, man, we could we could advance and we can beat these guys. And we blew our opportunity. And at the end of the game, we drew up a play and it, was, it turned into a broken play. And Cliff Livingston went to back with the left-hand uh, running hook. I was mad because the play was supposed to come to me. And I'm like, Woody, don't break the play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we ended up losing that game. And after the game, six, uh, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win mm-hmm. in Boston. And we had to look at that, right? Big headlines. So I remember we get to Boston and we walk out of the locker room and I stop. I said, we gonna win this bleep bleep game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't come out here. I said, whoever guarding me tonight gonna have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in the other locker room to, to his teammates. So it, it um it set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever in the in seventh game. And I remember he only had 12 points going to the fourth quarter. And Kevin, it was so it was Kevin Willis, it was me and Larry. We were running down the court, and Kevin reached across me, put his hands, and Bird said, said, don't let this so-and-so score anymore now. I'm like, what you doing? Woke that monster. <laughs> you don't wake up a sleeping giant. <laughs> and his eyes got that big, man. I remember they took me out for a blow, and Kevin and uh, Cliff Livingston came in the game, and he got hot. Mm-hmm. And the coach said, Nick, go out there, stop him. I'm like, stop him? He hot now. He forget that. <laughs> yeah. And so the only thing I can do is try to match him bucket for bucket. bucket, for bucket. And it was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. And it was smart play by Danny Ainge because he he tackled me at half court in, in <laughs> fear that I would hit a three from half court to win the game, you know. And uh, Bird had 20, I think 20, 22 going into that quarter. Mm. Actually had 20, 20, 22 in that quarter. But like I said, I think he ended up with 34 mm. for the game. Mm. Uh, yeah. And Boston still has one possession yeah. left. And you have one job to do. Yeah. Don't lose sight yeah. of Larry Bird. <laughs> I failed. I failed. 
How did I you lose miserable. sight of Larry Bird? You know, Larry was so smart that I don't know what they ran, the play call, but he he diagrammed something where Danny Ainge was in the corner, right? So I had Cooper between, you know, me and Danny Ainge. So I was trying to, to deny Larry Bird. And then when the referee gave him the ball, I realized what was happening, but it was too late. He kept pushing me up a little bit. And then Danny Ainge cleared out. And that whole side was open. And when that ball was in the air, I was like, I'd already thrown the ball away in, in game two in 1984. And now I'm thinking, what a defensive dummy uh, allowed him to get the ball. He saw me coming. He didn't have much time. And I think he did see me out of the uh, out of his eye. But he, he doesn't miss that shot. So I just was lucky, very lucky. But for our listeners, could you walk us through the infamous fight with Larry Bird from, from 1984? It was like a little melee, you know, and, and, and interesting. I mean, Larry and I, we, we, we had a legitimate rivalry. Uh, you know, he, he came in after John Havlicek was there for many years, and John and I were friends. And Larry and I... Um, it was Larry, Marcus Johnson, Adrian Dantley, and there were uh, a few guys who were the heir apparent to my position, <laughs> which is small forward. <laughs> and uh, so it was always tough, you know, playing against playing against them because you know it seemed like they were next in line and they wanted to kind of force me out because I was reigning small forward in the league, uh, all pro. You know, first team, so on and so forth. So, uh, so with Larry, uh, it was evident that he could play big forward or small forward, and there was uh, no, no limit to the things that he could do on the court. He just did them at a different pace uh, than others. So he wasn't deterrent, decided to be quick, but he was really adept in, in, in what he did. And uh, and 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 we, I call him a complainer. <laughs> so a lot of people call him a trash talker whatever and i wasn't really into trash talk so you know i i would say there he is complaining again or whatever you know and, and so we go down we go down on uh on offense and i'm on defense i'm on him the call doesn't go his way i immediately run down court because we got the ball now so when i run down he right is coming down Just court, and he's coming right bird, right bird towards me. like he's pissed and, uh, as always, the official team <laughs> so, so I'm like, this is an exhibition game, isn't it? <laughs> so I think it was like preseason. So I thought he was going to hit me. I mean, I really did. I really did. And I reached out and I just kind of tried to hold him at bay. And I had him like in this chest area. And I guess my hand kind of slid up on his neck. <laughs> <A little bit. laughs> prior, to, prior to that NCAA tournament, still was the most watched NCAA finals game in, in, in NCAA history. Right. How much did you know about Larry Bird prior to that game? Well, Shannon, um, the summer before, they had the WIT tournament. Okay. And they brought all the best college players together. Okay. To play against the world. Okay. And, man, <clears throat> I see this guy, you know, blonde hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, let me see if he can play. Okay. Man, I'm sitting there watching him shoot Shannon. He must have made 30 in a row all net. I so said, he was Steph Curry before Steph yeah, Wade. Yeah, yeah, Steph. yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there saying, this dude can play. Okay. Because you know, brothers, we always say, okay, can the white dude really play? Correct. You know? Right. So, so then I said, oh, man, he a bad boy. Right. And then we got in the game. Jack Gibbons was player of the year that year. Right. He tore him up, man. From Kentucky, Jack Gibbons from Kentucky. Con Kentucky. Because they won the national championship That's in 78. Right. That same time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Man, Larry Bird was taking it to him. <laughs> I said, oh, man. I'm calling back home saying, oh, he for real. He for real. This right. new Larry Bird? Right. Oh, he got it. He right. play. He's dominating Jack right. Gibbons. I mean, we knew what play when they called four down, three out, 33 C. We Whatever it was okay. to get Larry open, we knew zipper, whatever. Yeah. We knew where the ball was going to go. And that's what made Larry larger than life because he knew 
that we knew that he was going to get the basketball. And when he came off a down pick and they picking me and Kareem or Worthy, we stepped out on him. Larry always had, let, let, let me see, let, one thing, this is one thing I, I, I said, you know, Larry never really talked to me, but one particular in the 85, you know, the 84 series, <clears throat> we're playing in the, in the forum. And this particular play down is a timeout and they're coming down and Larry gets me at the top of the key and he's walking me underneath his basket. He goes, Coop, I'm ready to wear your ass out. What? Okay, I get down to my best defensive stance. He goes down the lane. He comes off the left side, and Robert Parrish sets a pick. Great picker. Great picker. Come off, and we knew the play. We knew what was coming up, and Kareem was ready. And as Larry comes off the pick, shoulder to shoulder with Parrish, and I'm trailing behind him, he catches the basketball right about the elbow. And he gets the ball and he goes up and Kareem stops him from turning the corner. Larry catches the ball. He goes up in the air and here I come. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to smash this shit, man. So I jump up and I got my hand. And I don't know how Larry got this ball between Kareem and I. Because Kareem had his hands up. I'm coming with my right hand. because, And he had a great pass. I, I, like I said, I don't know how he got it to him. Hits Robert Parrish for a roll to the basket Robert Duncan. And Larry looks over his shoulder at me and he laughs. He said, I told you, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I do remember now, this is practice, is I'm making a backdoor cut and Larry actually spun the ball. Like I had never dreamed of spinning the ball. He back spun the ball, bounced out in front of me. I about pulled a hamstring because I thought the damn ball was going out of bounds. It popped back up and it hit me in my hands. He just said, you get open, I'll hit you. And I went like, oh, okay then. I was like, and that I do remember because I remember thinking, I'm gonna try that spin pass. I tried it once and said, I'm not doing that ever again. Like I threw it out of bounds. Off of the ball. Back to Larry Bird to McHale, what a pass. We, we up one and we come out of the huddle and, and Bird looks at me and, and Kent Benson is guarding Bird. And Bird looks at me and he goes, He's got no shot. And he says it right to, to, to Benson as he was standing there, right? And sure enough, he gets it in on the left side of the court, takes it down to the baseline. All right, here's Dennis. Gets it in the bird. Larry, a runner. Got it! Ball game's over. Boston wins. Knocked it down. They win by one. He walks off. He goes, I told you. You can't put him on me. He said, you better get somebody else who can guard me. So I mind my own business on the jump, and he walks out, and he just stands next to me, and he leans over and he looks at me. And I didn't pay him any attention. He said, do you honestly think you're going to guard me? Motherfucker? <laughs> Curse that. Like, what? I just didn't say nothing. <laughs> then he stands up, and he looks over at our bench, and he looks at Kyle. You all think this rookie going to guard me? Man, I'm going to bust you up just right in my ear. And I'm just looking forward. I'm like, and so by that time, all the guys on the floor is just cracking up, even my teammates. So I'm like, would this official please throw this ball up? <laughs> so the, the official couldn't throw the ball up because there was something going on on the side. So then finally he walks around, stands in front of me, he said, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to wear your ass out. And then I looked at him. I said, I'm here. Don't worry about it. I said, hey, you ain't intimidating nobody. I said, I'm from Chicago. Where you from? He started laughing. Game starts, and he's just wearing me out. Okay? And I'm trying to go back at him. I'm shooting bricks. And in the fourth quarter he was in, it was late. Game was kind of close. And he came down. He said, you talking all that junk. I bet you can't do this. And he raises up from Steph Curry range. And he shoots an air ball. And I look at him, he's like, that don't matter. It's the fact that I can do it and stay in the game. I bet you can't. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay. So. <laughs> we can do it all. Larry and Magic could control the game with 12 shots. It was amazing. They'd be seven for 12. They'd have 20 points, 15 rebounds, and 12 assists. And you go, man, the guy shot the ball 12 times and was the best player on the court by far. Probably 14 years old when I met him. And really? 
you know, and he played with us, you know, so he was playing with the pros, you know, at 14. And, and you knew. Oh, man. He was special then. Well, he was probably smart enough to get you the ball in the spot. Well, right? I mean, he was smart enough to get a whole lot of people the ball. Right. You know, I mean, that would made him magic. Um, he understood how to win. He was all about winning. Um, he made people around him better. He made people around him better at 14. So right. his potential was scary. And I think he reached his full potential and uh, having a super career he had. When you walk out of the locker room, here's this guy that's like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. So all of a sudden you got this college atmosphere with the Lakers because Magic brought all of that fear. He came in, man, he's pushing that ball up the floor, and we were like, we got to run. <laughs> and if you didn't look up, and he was like, look up, Wood, like, hey! And the ball was right there. When I went to the Great Western Forum, then watched Magic come down and do his thing, you know, and orchestrate his team and make them understand this way, this, this we gonna run this. And I mean, I was in awe. You know, and Don Nelson, he had to call the Tarrant Mountain, had to take me out the game because he's like, I hope you're not going all and watching him and not really playing. I want to tell him, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I need to sit down for a minute because why? Wow, it took me a half just to realize that I'm, I'm, I'm playing against Magic. One time, come in through the, the huddle, and I played against Magic a number of times, and, and Dennis Johnson always. Uh, defended Irving and walk up to me and goes, man, is that guy strong or what? <laughs> I, said, I know he's, he don't look very strong, but he's pretty strong. And he goes, Jesus, he said, some of the things that he does out here, he said, there's no way I can stop him. He said, but don't you ever tell him. <laughs> and in 1980, uh, we went right to the finals. And so we're playing in the pivotal series against the Philadelphia 76ers. And we're in game five uh, at the Forum. And in the third quarter, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sprains his ankle, severely sprains his ankle, and has to be sort of carried, not carried off the court, but really helped off the court to get to the locker room. You see magic, and you can see concern in his face. And so we went on uh, to play that third quarter, and then when Kareem came back onto the court in, in the fourth quarter, uh, it was magic and Kareem that teamed up for the winning basket to win game five. But after the game, we found out that Kareem was finished probably for this. Our final walkthrough before we played game six, and Paul Westhead put him at the center spot. And I remember when we got on the plane to go back to Philadelphia, Kareem used to sit in first class in seat 1A. That was his seat. Nobody else ever sat in seat 1A. It was an aisle seat. Gave him more leg room. And as soon as Urban got on the plane, he sat right in 1A. <laughs> he said, you guys don't think we can win without Kareem? Well, I'm going to take his spot. I'm going to sit in 1A. And then when we lined up for the center jump in game six, Magic went in and jumped center against Caldwell Jones. A young man by the name of Magic Johnson is going to start at center. Then after that game, 42 points you know, and 15 rebounds across the masthead of the Los Angeles Times, it simply said, it's magic. <laughs> Your idol growing up was Magic Johnson, a yeah. guy you admired. I grew up watching you, watching mm -hmm. Bird, watching mm -hmm. Michael, and I just always believed that winning multiple championships was part of, you know, being a great player. Right. Like, that's what you had to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because that's what I just grew up watching. Mm -hmm. No, I, like, I, I grew up watching Magic, and, and, and um, I've had... You know, I've learned so much from him. I can't sit here and be like, you know, I'm the greatest Laker ever. To me, he is. And I learned from watching you, so I just went out there to have well, fun. Well, thank you. You know, but you know, you know, back in the day, back in the day, you used to wear them little Daisy Duke. The socks all the way up here. You know, the afro. You know, so. I got the afro going with the shorts, man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm you cool. Uh, now they all the way over below your knees and everything. Yeah, you get to hide those little toothpick legs. Mm. <laughs> Like, without him, you're no, the greatest. Listen, I, I gotta to keep it real with you. Like I, I, I've stole so much from him. Uh huh. That my game wouldn't be complete without him. You know, everyone when they was in, when they was younger wanted to fly like Jordan, wanted to dish no look passes like Magic, and wanted to shoot like Bird. You can't get too close to Michael. It's a foul. 
Give me a thousand dollars a year and a half, man. I hear you talking. <laughs> My goodness. I don't think you ever found out of a game. When do you ever find out of a game? So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, what's your favorite MJ magic bird moment or story from this video? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and show love to the YG gang. And I'm out.